Welcome back to chapter three of the adventures of OS. What today I'm gonna to show you is how to allocate a single page and how to keep track of what pages are allocated and what pages are free. The reason we wanna do this is whenever we start getting to user processes, we're gonna hand over entire pages over to the user and map it into their memory management, their virtual address space. And the way we do that is through the memory management unit. And so what I've got on the screen right now is mem.s. So this is an assembly file. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually solidify to actually make symbols global symbols called heap start and heap size. That way that I can import them into Rust and use the heap start where the heap actually starts and the heap size, how much memory we have left. And so the heap is actually going to start after our memory addresses. So let's take a look at our memory so far. So our memory sort of looks like this, just a contiguous page of memory where we have zero and then we have the size of the memory here. Okay, and so what we've already done is we've taken up all of this memory right here because that is where the text section is. That's where your CPU instructions are located. Data structures, your global variables, things like that are all located here. And so all of that gets put into the top of the memory location. Then afterward, we have this section right here called heap start. And then this whole thing right here from heap start all the way down to size, that's heap size, okay? So now we know how much of this memory is free, how much of that memory has not been taken up. And now if you look at the linker script, we gave it 128 megabytes. And so this is not a lot of memory, but it still gives us a lot for whatever the operating system we're going to do. And so in here at heat start, the very top of it starts with an eight bit descriptor called a page descriptor. And what we're going to do is that is going to keep track of our allocations, whether it's allocated or not. Now, when we allocate, we allocate an entire page. And these pages themselves are 4096 bytes four kilobytes. The reason we're doing that is because that's the exact same resolution as the memory management unit. And so what we're going to do is the first descriptor will describe the first 4096 bytes. The second descriptor describes the next 4096 bytes. And that's how we're going to keep track of when the last allocation is. So that tells us how many allocations we complete, we totally have for a process or for the kernel itself. And then each descriptor tells us whether that page has been taken or not. And so as you can see, we'll, we'll get a little fragmentation in here. But what we're going to do is the way we keep this going is we allocate memory and for the last page that we get. So say I need eight kilobytes. The first page will be taken, the last page will be taken, and it will be the last page. And so we're going to use an eight bit descriptor to do this, but we only need really two of these bits to do it. So if we go back to our Rust, you can see that this is what's been posted on the GitHub. And what we have is we have the heap start heap size. Essentially all that's going to do is import heap start and heap size, those two symbols that we just created in assembly into Rust. And the reason we say X turn C is so that we use the C style as in the C programming language, the C style global so that Rust knows how to find them and knows what they're going to look like when it gets there. Now line 19, the static new alloc start, essentially what we're going to do is that tells us when the allocations actually start. So that's after the page descriptors. So we're looking at when this starts right here. Because each page is 4096 bytes, that tells us the last three hex digits must be zero. Because one hex digit is four bits, four times three gives us 12. And the reason that's important is because two to the 12th is 4096. Okay, so therefore, if we have a hex number with the last three digits of zero, that tells us it is a multiple of 4096. And that keeps us safe because we can only give multiples of 4096 to the memory management unit. And so that is all we can do. So whenever we give a page to a user, they have access to all those 4096 bytes. We don't get to slice those 4096 bytes. We have to give the whole thing over to the user process or to the kernel. So what I've done here is each page size, so each page allocation is 4096 bytes. And that's essentially what we've got here. So I've added additional things to our Rust file and you can see now we have a page order, which is two to the 12th. So the 12th just tells you which bit the last one is going to be set to, and then a page size, which is one shift left to the page order, which in this case is 12. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us four kilobytes. Now, the reason we're using page order and page size is just because whenever we align the value, it has to be a power of two, otherwise we can never align the value. And so I wrote a function, this public constant function. Essentially, this just returns a simple expression. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one to the power of the order. So that essentially anything left shifted like this so if I do one shift left 12 bits, essentially that's going to be two to the 12, 4096. And the reason we're doing that is because whenever we get to an off page, so let me create a new 
page here. Whenever we get an off page, so for example, say this is 4096 across. Well, if we get here, well, we can't allocate this because this is not enough. And we can't allocate this because now it spans two rows. And so what we have to do is we have to waste all this space right here and actually allocate a full page like this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add this little bit here, okay? And that will force this to be starting at the next row. And what that does for us is now we have a page that is a multiple of 4096. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add, because we always have to round up to the next one. Even if we have one bit set, we can't use that entire row. We always have to add one more. And so what we're doing is we're adding 4095. The reason we don't add 4096 is because if this is already let's say it is 4096 or well, 4096 it's last three hex digits r zero and if we were to do this we'd actually be at 8k and so we add 4095 just to come super super close but not over just like the price is right method that's why we subtract one from this and then what we do is we take the comp and we flip all the zeros to ones and we end them together what that's going to do is it's going to chop off the last 12 bits of this number so because we rounded up we might not be inside that because we are assuming that the val the address that gives that we're given is not already aligned to 4096 and so this will help us do that so what we do is we add 4095 to it and then we take that result and end it with the complement of 4095 now the complement of 4095 remember 4096 is one with 11 zeros after it and so if we do this what we're going to do is we're, we're flipping all those bits around and what we're doing is we're sending the last 12 bits to zero and if we do that well, now we have a 4096 aligned. It's a multiple of 4096. So what I've done here is now we have REPR in Rust. That's a directive. And what it's going to do is it's going to direct Rust to create this enumeration page bits and make it a U8, an unsigned 8-bit integer. So remember, all the descriptors that we're going to have to describe each one of these pages is going to be an 8-bit descriptor. And what we do is we have empty, means the descriptor is free to be taken, means the memory has not been taken. Taken tells us that the memory has been accessed and it is taken, it's allocated already, we can't take it again. And then last tells us that it's the last page that was taken. And so all taken pages should have a taken bit and then the last bit. So that gives us a contiguous allocation. So say I need three pages or something like that. If I need three pages, then what I'm going to do is the first two pages. So here's my three pages right here. So these two pages right here are gonna have taken, and then this last page is gonna have taken or with last, okay? And so what we do is we give the memory address of this top descriptor right here, it's the actual allocation. And whenever the user frees that, or whenever we free it to ourselves, that gives us a starting point. And we just keep freeing page after page after page until we find this last bit right here. And that is how our memory allocator is going to work. And so we hand out multiples of 4096. We hand out pages with this memory allocator. The next thing we're going to do is we have a page itself. So this is the, the page descriptor and it has an eight bit flags. So there you go. So these flags and these page bits, the reason the page bits themselves are U8 is because we're gonna use those as the flags. So I'm going to implement some helper functions for the page and that's just the descriptor, just to get some information off the descriptor. So is last will return true if, it, if that is last bit is set or it returns false. Otherwise, is taken is the same thing, except if it's taken. And then I have just the complements of those is free. And then clear will actually set the page. It'll clear the page allocation. It will no longer be the last and it no longer will be taken. And then if you want to set individual flags, you can use set flag. Or if you want to clear individual flags, you can use clear flag. So when we in initialize our allocation system, it's not really that difficult. So essentially what all we're going to do is take each descriptor and set them to empty. That way there we have all of our descriptors because we know based on the heap size divided by page size, we know how many descriptors we need because we need one descriptor for every 4096 bytes, which is the page size. So we take our entire allocation that we have, divide that by 4096, that tells us here's how many pages are available to you. And so we need to have one descriptor for each one of those. Now granted the descriptors and the allocations themselves are gonna share these pages, but that's okay for now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a pointer. So to set a raw pointer in Rust, it's an unsafe operation. And what we do is the star mute tells us that it's going to be a mutable pointer. That means we can change the value that it points to. Well, the value at the memory location that it points to. It's going to be a page, so it's one of those page bit allocations. And this is going to be a U8. 
So the memory address, if we dereference this pointer and we went to that memory address, we would find an 8-bit unsigned integer. And then what I do is I go through every single one of those descriptors and I clear them to zero. That way there all allocations have been cleared and we're ready to take them because we can't assume that the memory is going to be zero to start with. And then alloc start, essentially alloc start once again is just telling me where the allocation starts. So we know where the heap starts, but now we're looking for where the allocation starts. The allocation starts on a page bounder, it means it's a multiple 4096 and it's right past the descriptors. So in this case, what I do is I take the current heap start add the number descriptors that we have. Now I did multiplies by size of page, that should be one. But if we ever increase this, if we ever grow it to be two bytes or something like that, it might be two. So size of returns the number of bytes that it's going to be. And so as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm adding all these descriptors so that we skip them. Remember, Alex start needs to skip all the page allocations and look to the top. Now we're going to use align values because the first allocation that I can use needs to be a multiple of 4096. And so page order once again is 12, which is two to the 12, 4096. Now when I allocate a page, all I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a contiguous allocation. And so whenever you allocate a page, you give it the number of pages you want to allocate. And so when I do that, I'm going to get back a mutable U8 pointer. Now that mutable U8 pointer can be transferred into whatever you want, any kind of pointer that you want. But in this case, if we return null, that means allocation failed. If we return an actual memory address, it means allocation succeeded. So on line 120, I'm asserting that the number of pages is greater than zero. If this assertion is incorrect or proves false, it'll panic. And Rust will tell you here on line 120 of page.rs, this assertion pages greater than zero failed. So you can actually debug your code doing that way. Now, a lot of times you just put an if statement and just quietly go away, but you sort of want to debug your kernel as you write it. That way there you don't leave bugs in there and they just grow and grow and grow. So once again, I calculate the number of pages and I calculate the heap start. So what we're gonna do is search through all these descriptors for contiguous blocks. So if I need three pages, I have to look for not taken, not taken, not taken. If I get not taken, not taken, taken, I can't use it because we're looking for a contiguous allocation when we do this. There's certain reasons we want a contiguous allocation. With the MMU, we don't necessarily need a contiguous allocation, but in this case, alloc is guaranteed to give you a contiguous allocation. Okay, so what we do is we go through them all. We see which ones are free. If we find one, we say, yes, it's free, okay? Then what we have to do is we have to check the subsequent pages to see if those are free as well. If they are, we just found our page and we allocate it. We say that it's taken, and we keep saying taken, taken, taken until we get the very last page entry. And that last descriptor is going to be called last. Notice down here, we return alloc start plus page size times i. So in this case, i is the descriptor that we found. Remember, one descriptor describes the page size. And so what we do is we multiply whichever descriptor we found by the page size and add that to alloc start. So if it was the very first descriptor, I will be zero. Zero times 496, once again is zero. So we get allocated the very first page. If we are at number one, we multiply I, which would be one times 4096. And so now we are at 4096, when it past the alloc start. So we're at the second page. If we get to this point right here, it means we weren't able to find a contiguous allocation and we return null mute. So null mute comes from up here core pointer null mute and essentially it just is a null pointer that's mutable okay and because we're returning a mutable pointer we have to use null mute otherwise you can use null ptr if it's a constant pointer so one of the things that we always have to do is in kernel memory we never want to leak back and forth we never want to leak kernel data into user space and vice versa although it's not as bad if we leak user space into kernel space so what we do here is Z alloc stands for zero allocation. We do the exact same thing as we do with allocation and we work on page system. However, when we're done with it, we clear it. So as you can see on line 177, we make sure that we're not gonna clear null pointer, otherwise things go wrong. We get the size, which is the page size times the number of pages. Now, the reason we're divided by 64 is because we're gonna write 64 bit zeros. And so we're gonna write what are called double words, which are eight bytes a piece. We're gonna write eight bytes at a time. And so I divide by 64. I just realized I had an error in the code, so what I've done is changed it. 
Now we're dividing by eight because whenever we add I to the pointer, it's going to do, big pointer right here is a U64. It's a 64 bit pointer, eight byte pointer. So 64 byte bits is eight bytes. And what I've done here is I divided by eight because we're gonna go eight bytes at a time. I had 64 in there because it's 64 bits, but we're actually doing bytes, not bits. So I got a little confused on that too. So 4096 mod eight is equal to zero. That's good because what we can do is we can go eight bytes at a time, clear all eight bytes all in one fell swoop and just clear those. It'll be slightly quicker than if we just had to do it byte by byte. And essentially what I do here is I dereference the pointer. It means instead of going to the memory address, I actually go to the memory address and the value. So I'm not setting the memory address to zero, I'm setting the value at that memory address to zero. And whenever I do dot add, that will add to the memory address that we have. And because each one of these are eight bytes, it'll add eight times I automatically for us. So we don't actually do, have to do that multiplication. And then on line 192, we return the zeroed allocation. Now, whenever we deallocate, we go back to this figure right here. We deallocate from the start. So whenever the user gives me a mute U8 pointer, that's the very top of the allocation. And what I have to do is I sort of undo it to get back to the descriptors. And so what I do is I do heap start plus the pointer. Pointer is the memory address itself minus the allocation start. So what that's gonna do is give us the difference, what page we're actually on. And then I divide by the page size because now that will tell me so pointer minus allocation start tells me what multiple 4096 I'm at. If I divide that by 4096, now that tells me what descriptor I'm at. And descriptors start with the value zero. So what I do is I take keep start, add on the descriptor to it. You remember a descriptor is one byte a piece. Now it'll tell me which descriptor we're starting at. And so what I do is I, number one, I make an, asser uh, an assertion to make sure that we're still within the bounds of our address because nothing error checks the mutable pointer that has been given to us. And so we have to error check that, make sure everything's good to go. So then what I do is I calculate that address and mute P right now is now pointing to a page, that page descriptor that we had. And so what, what I'm doing is while it's taken and it's not the last one, we're freeing it, freeing it, freeing it. We just keep moving on to the next page. We know it's a contiguous allocation, and so we can go in order. And so what we do is we take the very first page that we've allocated, which will be this one right here, and we say, if it's taken, clear it. Then we go to the next, next one. If it's taken, clear it. Then we go to the next one, this last one right here. We see that it's last, and so we break this loop right here. Because this is last, I assert that it is the last, that that's the reason we broke. And that should be the reason we broke. If the reason we broke is because it's not taken, that means we didn't see the last page allocation before we saw the first not taken. And that typically means that you double freed. If I call the alloc twice on the same pointer, we're gonna hit line 214, and it's gonna say a possible double free. And so what we do here is that's just a way to error check ourselves. And then down here, this is the last page. You notice this says not is last. So if it is the last page, we'll break the while loop without clearing it. And so that's why we clear it down here. And all we're doing is we're just making sure that we're error checking here. Now I wrote this debug function. I'm not gonna go into what it does, but this debug function print page allocations essentially just prints out all the page allocations and how many pages have been allocated. And you can step through this to see how I've done that, but it's not that big of a deal. And it's just for debugging purposes. You're never gonna really use this for any other purposes than to see whether all your paging system is correct. So your MMU returns down here, we're actually going to actually program the MMU. And if you look at the RISC-V system, the RISC-V system actually has an MMU entry of 64 bits, eight bytes. And in there, the bits at the lower end, the least significant bits, are valid, read, write, execute, user, global, access, and dirty. And so those don't contribute to the address that we're going to translate into. Instead, it tells us the permissions based on that address. So we'll get into the MMU at a later video, but for now, just making sure everyone understands what we're doing with this page allocation. Once again, we're giving individual pages. And so what we're going to do in this, the grand scheme of things, is I allocate a page to a user process, and then using the MMU, I map that into the user process's memory, virtual memory address space. Remember, the virtual process, or the process doesn't care that it's using virtual memory versus physical memory. Essentially, all memory looks the same to it. So if we give it virtual memory and we make translations, it doesn't care, it's going to be the same thing. Now, the reason we have to use virtual memory is because the starting location of the program is determined at compile time. And so all we have to do is make sure that we map into that location. So that way there, two or three processes can have the exact same starting point. And because it's virtual memory address, 
the virtual memory address will look the same, but the physical memory behind the scenes will be different. So that's your page allocator. The next video I'm gonna show you is how we actually program the MMU using these pages.